Good evening, everyone. My name is Moises Esparza. I'm the exhibitions manager for the San Diego Latino Film Festival. Thank you so much for joining us today for our discussion following the screening of Lucinda Urrusti Pintora. Before I introduce our guest, Juan Francisco Urrusti, to the stream, I just want to take a moment to thank all of you for making this festival such a special edition. We are on day seventh of the festival so we're a little bit half past way but there's still plenty of films we have yet to premiere as well as encores of films that play during the first half of the festival on saturday march 20th we are producing a drive-in double feature at westfield mission valley mall it's gonna be an amazing double feature um, with the film el retiro from argentina and the classic buena vista social club Doors will open at 5 p.m. and we'll have pre-show uh, pre entertainment from the musicians Kimba Light. It's going to be a great time. I hope to see many of you there. Um, you know, we launched the festival with a drive-in, so it makes sense that we close it with another drive-in. It was such a magical experience being with you on March 11th. So I hope to be with you on March 20th. Um, beyond that, I want to say that there is a festival recap show that happens every night. Our other moderator, Luis Martinez, produces it on his 2 a.m. burrito um, social media channels. So if you want to get involved, visit those channels, reach out to Luis, and see if you can get on the stream. He's, he has guests, uh, filmmakers, and other festival fans as well. Well, without much further ado, let's welcome to the stream Juan Francisco Urrusti, director of Lucinda Urrusti Pintora. Hola. Hi, Juan Francisco. Hola, ¿cómo estás? How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very uh, thrilled because of uh, because of the film participating in in the San, San Diego Latino Film Festival. Uh, in, in, and to be with you, uh, in, uh, it's an honor. Yeah, a, a great joy, joy of mine during this festival, my festival career was getting to meet you when you were in, in San Diego a few years ago for your other um, film un exilio. Um, so thank you so much. Next, a family film. Yes, yes. Um, it was a great experience meeting you, and your energy that you brought to the festival was really infectious. And you watched so many films, and you were such a part of our community. Um, so thank you so much for being in person with us then and virtual now uh, mm -hmm. with your new documentary. It's it's a pleasure to be able to screen it. Um, the documentary is obviously a very personal one, similar to your previous one. Um, I learned in an earlier Q&A that I had with you that it wasn't always the case. Um, maybe from an emotional standpoint, and then perhaps from the standpoint of a filmmaker, mm -hmm. what are the difference between what are the differences differences between creating a documentary related to your family versus one that's not? Well, uh, the challenge, uh, well, making a film about uh, people that not, are not part of the family uh, can also be difficult because uh, you have to, have to know the people well. You have to do research, you have to meet the people uh, and uh, find things that you have in common, basically. You know, uh, 
because one so to establish like a horizontal relationship, you know, between you and, and, and him or her or them, and to to see what what they have inside, you know, and what can be good, you know, to to share with others about those people. And, and making films about the, your family, it's also a journey of discovery because one may think that you you know your family well, but it but actually we don't. You, you know, we, we, we well at least in my case I didn't know much until until I uh, decided to make this film, the, the 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 film about my family that is I screened uh, a few years ago. You know, with you. this one. Uh, came at, at almost at the same time by chance because uh, in 2015, the Museum of Mexico City asked me to do a very short film, five minute film to accompany her exhibition, her solo exhibition at the Mexico City Museum. And they say, well, we have no money, you can do it. But because I had already interviewed my sister, my sister, my aunt since 2012, in 2013 and said, well, yeah, I can do it. And although I had not focused on her art, and that's what I did from that point, instead of focusing on her coming to Mexico as a child refugee, well, it's a film about how she became an artist from, from making uh, teddy bears, you know, when she was still a child and illegally working, you know, because she had to bring some money for the family to the point where she's an established artist and uh, one of Mexico's most important portrait artists. And, uh, but also she's my aunt. And, I'm, and it's a film that, all, that I make out of gratitude because uh, when I wanted to study filmmaking, I first sent money to a film school in England that is not, did not exist. It, it was a scam and I lost oh. my money. Oh my God, Juan Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> And then I had to pay lawyers, and we were 17 students that, you know, we lost our money. Oh in the God. meantime, she sent me some money, and, and uh, <coughs> because, sorry, my father was a medicine doctor, but in the public uh, hospital, and she, he never made much money, although he was a very good doctor, you know, a member of the Academy of Medicine, National Academy of Medicine. So she said, well, if you find a good school or whatever, I can help you. And she paid uh, some of the tuition fees that I had. So and from that point on, she has also um, done something for the rest of the family. And uh, films can also use, uh, be, you, one can also make films just for, just because those people mean to you. Yeah. Yes, and then it's a way of, uh, it's not, you never pay anybody back, but some kind of ret retribution. And uh, so instead of making just that small film, five minute film for the museum, well, I made this feature, you know, I looked for the person that had uh, written down the, well, had written, in fact, I had shot already in 2012, the, when her, her, that, last book was presented, you know, was made and published. So I, sh I had to, ha I had that material and I had some material that I had shot at her place. And I just had to, to figure out how to, what shape to, to give it to the, to the film or, and, and, uh, but uh, this is the, that's the difference that in, in the end, you, you have to almost in any case, whether it, you know the people you, you're shooting, or whether they're total strangers, the, the challenge is to try to, to know them as much as you can, and if possible, to understand them, and better still, to like them, or to at least to, to, uh, to be able to, like Jorge Preloran said, he was an Argentinian filmmaker that taught in California, I don't remember exactly where, but he said, you, you have to be able to put yourself in other people's shoes. And uh, that, I did that, whether it was my family or whether it was a total stranger. By the way, many of those strangers that you 
started to make a film with, eventually become friends of yours or became important. Uh, you know, it's not like, okay, I shoot you and goodbye. No, usually it's a very, I mean, a lifelong relationship that you establish, uh, at least in my experience, with, uh, in two, at least two or three films, so I can say that the a good, solid friendship develops uh, from the films. And, uh, well, that's it. Moises, I don't know if I'm answering or... No, yeah, you, you absolutely are. Um, if I can also borrow from the or previous conversation, you said something very, I guess, poetic, at least to me, was you, you brought up Michael Landrell and you said that the, the, the form already, the form already exists in the material in a way. So I'm wondering in when making a documentary, how do you go about finding that form and carving it out um, during the making of this, per, of, of this particular documentary? Yeah, well, it's it, it, exactly at the beginning, it's like a rock and you, you want to know what's inside that rock, that rock. Is it a, a man, a woman, a duck, an elephant? A, and to find, you know, what the, what, the, the, what that rock looks like or appears to be in. Uh, well, in film is the same. You have to to hear the film to see how, to ask yourself, how does the, this film has to feel? How does this film has to smell, if possible? Or, you know, how, how does it have to sound? And you talk to people you trust, people that like, like film, your colleagues or family, and it's uh, little by little they, they they also give you you know good ideas you know, or, or um, why don't you start with this sentence or with this image or and uh, and you try in, so I, I try to well I, I talk about the, the, the things that I'm doing and uh, through these conversations I, I I sometimes get a good I very good ideas you know films is teamwork and uh, and uh, sometimes, you know, uh, as I say, as in this film, mm, some of the ideas came from my wife, for instance. Mm -hmm. In the other, in the film that you know about the family, well, the, the beginnings of the film was an idea of one of my daughters. And uh, so that's it. But you have to feel it, and and sometimes you, it, sometimes it's just painful. It's not easy, you know, and. Or there is, or you find nothing that you can hold on to, like a small thread to pull from, you know. But once you find that thread, things usually get easier. One of the things I always ask ask myself comes to, um, was an advice given by a teacher to me. He said, uh, "Know your ending, find yours, and if you know your ending, and you you work like backwards, you'll see." A, Maybe you you reach uh, uh, when do you start when how to start your film, but knowing your ending is uh, very important, and um, because it also establishes the, the tone of the film, you know, what uh, the flavor you want the audience to 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 stay with, you know, like a, a mood or tone. So, but as as we as we said or. You know, my colleague said in the last ch uh, conversation we had, there's no like set rule or fixed rule, you know, in documentary, it's always improvising, experimenting. And so many times nothing works and you just have to to cry and, and start all over, you know, and when, so it's, uh, it can be also like Herzog, Herzog said once, uh, I think documentaries, not an aesthetic thing, it's an, uh, an athletic thing. Mm. And sometimes you have to be an athlete at least too, because it sometimes takes so much time, you know, to make a documentary or a report. Um, but again, as I said, sometimes you ha you need to, to suffer a bit because otherwise, I don't know, maybe the genius doesn't show up. You know? The genius in the lamp, I mean. The documentary, you know, takes us through the amazing trajectory of your aunt's uh, life, um, being in, in exile from the Spanish Civil War, arriving in Mexico. Then we get to learn about how 
I think a teacher identified a talent that she had. And there's another anecdote a little bit later on saying that she went to a school to learn how to illustrate, how to be an artist, but they put her in charge of the class right away. Yes. A very important painter was his teacher. Oh, yeah, tell, tell, sorry. Yes. It was not just any teacher. The, yeah. the teacher that told him, told her, you, now you, you give the class one of Mexico's top muralist painters, you know, and uh, Guerrero Galvan, whose works are in many, many museums, not only in Mexico, but elsewhere. Yes, uh, she, she made herself. Uh, I, I didn't, uh, I, no documentary or no portrait is always complete. Mm. I mean, there are many things that I left out, consciously, basically. For instance, she was always very beautiful. Uh, very, very, not that I say so. I mean, there are many pictures taken by great artists of, of her. But she didn't like the, the fact that many people just said, oh, she's very beautiful. Hmm. So uh, she said, well, so I wish they would pay, put more attention to, pay more attention to my paintings than to my body, you know, or my my looks. So, uh, and so I, many of those uh, remarks that I, I gather or I, that I found, some of them by very well-known writers and painters, colleagues, I left them out. Mm. And also some experiences that, uh, a couple of experiences uh, the, that uh, she may have not liked me to put in the film. Uh, because I, I, first and foremost, I wanted her to like the film. That's my. She was my first audience and and the, the most important audience to me. Her, she, because she's the protagonist, and uh, a couple of sad things that she lived lived through. Uh, I omitted them because I didn't want her to relive them, to live them again through the film. Uh, very painful experiences, and, and since those experiences didn't have really much to do with art but to her personal life then i said okay i'll i'll not use i'll not use them because sometimes artists uh, say well, I, I, I i say this because once i was told well your, your life seems to be very smooth you know why didn't you uh, do something <laughs> like some blood there you know like maybe frida kahlo or van gogh you know the tragic image of an artist no, you don't have to c cut your ear or commit suicide to make good art, you know. And uh, some artists have to, but others don't, you know, and live a, a normal life, so to speak, you know, with, with a son and a family. And and uh, so I, yeah, all those many artists can, uh, those that has been the fate of many artists, certainly that hasn't been the fate of my and and uh, as painful as those as those two experiences were in her life, I didn't want to focus them on because you know I, I prefer to have more paintings and more other ideas than parts of or, or to mention those story uh, those stories that could also hurt her when she saw the film. So. Yeah, yeah, you also, also speaks, speaks pretty explicitly about her relationship with with the frame of a painting, perhaps its limitations, and perhaps what it means to spill over, maybe not physically spill over the frame, but may, maybe its meaning beyond what's represented. Yes. Do you find any similar limitations with with documentary as an art form? Yes, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, but you know, I find sometimes it's to, well, sometimes to put little information is not okay, but to put too much information to, oh, to overspill with data, you know, it's not okay either. You know, like a, a documentary, a film, a painting, music has to breathe, has to have some air to breathe. And, uh, and if it spreads over the ca uh, beyond the canvas or beyond the ceiling, uh, it must have. There must be a reason for it, 
in the, in in the and maybe it's it's you 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 want to spread uh, in the case of the film the other people's heart and mind rather than the a space a time, not of a space but like I don't know if I'm making myself understood but uh, uh, in the case of a painting it's it, it's as well perhaps the idea is to to impregnate or to to throw some some pigment onto the the viewer you know to to affect him somehow and not so much with information but with uh, feelings because um, uh, yes documentaries it's about information but but information for what and I think that information to make us either more aware or more sensitive information per se is useless if it doesn't serve doesn't serve for the betterment of the people that make it or the people that receive it or get uh, but maybe I'm, I'm talking just like a priest and I hate it when I talk like it from uh, off the from the pulpit you know but uh, but that's my but that's my idea you know? um, you know it, it it's always fascinating to me when I watch art focused documentaries that their challenge seems twofold to capture who the artist is but also to capture the art, the art itself and authentic and in a way that is respectful but it, for it to also look like art and for it to be majestic mm -hmm. what sort of planning went into capturing lucinda's art on film were there particular techniques that you used um or yeah i, I don't know very curious to know about that procedure well, I didn't use a particular technique. Well, first of all, to show the complete work, you know, like, um, okay, like it's fine to, uh, as as she puts in, the, as she puts it in the film, the Joconda or Mona Lisa is not a good, good painting. Not only because of the smile, the smile is important, but the Mona Lisa is a great painting because of the whole painting. Not only because of the smile, although. The smile is the most celebrated part of it. So uh, yes, to, to to see the painting, to try to feel it. Uh, if it has texture, well, to let the spectator try to touch it, you know, to feel the the texture, you know, the the heavy painting or even uh, you know marble uh, powder, you know that. Uh, and and then the details that may not mean other things to other people, but it means to mean something or to the and to my cameraman, you know, who also proposes shots. He said, "Why don't we do this detail? Why? Or oh, I see this one. This this let's let's give this one more time than this other one because it's more abstract or I don't know. Sometimes uh, well, painting." Can can need very few seconds, you know, and other paintings can 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 need, require from the audience a few more seconds. No, or, so there's not a, a recipe, but uh, and also I prefer, uh, to me paintings that she likes more. You know, I didn't use mm -hmm. all the paintings, uh, but the ones that I I like best or that she likes more. And the ones that we had available because some of the paintings are in private collections and it was too complicated or too expensive to to get them, you know, so we just forgot about them, you know. Yeah. The, the ones that we had at hand. You use the ones you had available to you? Basically. basically okay. Yeah. There, there, there were also great moments of art in progress. I remember distinctly um, Lucinda explaining the material she was applying to, oh, sorry, to a, a, a painting, which was, I guess, a palm tree, perhaps, or a palm tree-like yes. material. Um, yes. Her work in progress, I guess, what impression, it's funny, when I looked at that, at that artwork, I was like, wow, this looks like art to me already, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was still in process. So, mm -hmm. 
I guess maybe if you can draw a parallel between the in process of an art piece that you're maybe creating and the in process stasis of a documentary, is there a moment when we should as viewers be exposed to, to the work, to the work at hand? Well, in the case of her painting, She's never happy with her paintings. You know, oh, she's so, never happy? Okay. She works for months and months and months, and sometimes she erases everything. Or she says, uh, for instance, uh, uh, she puts uh, too many elements, and then she starts erasing the painting until at the end it's practically minimalist. It starts like a Baroque piece, and, and then in the end, months afterwards, it's like uh, she just started it. So it's uh, backwards. And in, in film, I think is uh, I, something. It's very difficult to know when you have a film finished. So usually, it's a matter of of money or, or timing. You see, like uh, you you need to go ahead because uh, you must start another project because uh, you know uh, you know that working it too too much more may not uh, necessarily uh, make it better. Not, not necessarily, you know. For instance, uh, there's a film that I like very much, a documentary, and it's Picasso at work. Uh, Le Mystère Picasso, the Picasso mystery. Oh, I haven't uh, seen it. But it's one of, about it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting because uh, uh, many people photographed Picasso, interviewed Picasso, you know. He was the most important artist in the 20th century, by far, I think, you know. But none of them ever occurred or thought of filming him, mm. painting, uh, filming the, art, the artist at work in creation. And, uh, and this is The Mystery of Picasso by Henri Clouseau. Uh, it's a French uh, filmmaker who used to do, well, uh, thrillers, you know. Uh, I, I advise you, uh, uh, it's called Clouseau, uh, I see. Uh, well, uh, he was made about dynamite. I, what was, was it? It's about, I, I can't remember the, the name, the, the title of the film, but they're transporting dynamite. Hmm. And, and, and it can blow, the car can blow at any moment over a mountain. And you are, you know, and you, you suffer in the seat because you, you think you're going to blow up any minute. Well, so he made this film about Picasso at work, how he struggled with a painting. And he didn't want, Picasso didn't want to, to make the film in the first place because they say, we want, he told Clouseau, you want me to, to paint and paint and paint and to make many paintings, but that's not how I work. People are going to get the, a wrong idea of painting. They're going to think, that I can paint a, a, this painting in five minutes, and it actually take me, it takes me weeks or months. And uh, he may work 20 or 30 paintings at the same time. And my aunt is very much like that. She never stays uh, just in one painting. She, I wish I could do the same thing, to, just to focus on one film. But sometimes I have to think on, okay, I'm doing this film now. Where do I get the money for uh, the family? You know, it's like if I stu stay too long. But uh, that, that's a film. That, that's a, that, by the way, yes, it's a documentary that I recommend a lot. You know, the, the Picasso mystery or the Pic mystery of Picasso. And you, 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 you never. I never thought that Picasso would struggle so much making a painting until you see that him painting. I mean, he too. I was a genius, but he too made mistakes or something said, no, this is not working. And he rips up the drawing he was making. And you think, ah, he said, well, no, you think, ah, don't, don't uh, destroy it, you know, give it to me. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, the amazing thing about that film is that he agreed to make that film, Picasso, they, there was a contract with Clouseau, and the, the rule was that none of the drawings or the paintings that he would show in the film would be saved. So all the all the work was destroyed in, in the oh film, my God. and the film becomes like the living museum. 
because the only the way you can is, see those paintings yeah. are in that film. Wow. It's, uh, but so it's never easy for, not even for geniuses. And I'm sure that Stephen Hawking also, you know, when he thought of the universe, you know, he also doubted and suffered and struggled and, and, uh, and, and all artists, you know, all, 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 all artists. So uh, whenever I get desperate or depressed, I thought of those, I think also of those artists that even geniuses have to struggle for, for a painting uh, or, or to make, to, to hustle for, to make money for, for a film. Even in, in the United States of America, some of the greatest filmmakers still have to hustle here and there and to talk majors and they are kicked out of the office. And, uh, and, and, and so it's not easy for anybody, I think. Not even for Scorsese or for, of course, for Latinos or minorities even, it could be more difficult. But even for established great filmmakers, you know, it's a long way to, you know, that they have to, a, a path, a path can be, you know, difficult to, to tread on. You know? Your documentary perhaps has various layers. There's your Aunt Lucinda, the art, and then perhaps the narration, which is um, really exquisite and thoughtful. And the narrator's name is Jaime Moreno Villarreal? Or, yes. 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 Um, and, tell us about, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I, I, as I said, you know, before we, I wanted to make this film, before that museum asked me to make the, the short film for it, to accompany the exhibition. I had shot in 2012 the presentation of the book that uh, it had several articles, one by, one by Carlos Fuentes and another by another writer. And one article by um, Jaime Moreno. So when he read his article in the presentation of the book, I, I filmed that. Well, it was not a great camera. It was, in fact, it was not even a professional camera. But on video, and I love I love the text that uh, so that part of the narration is part of the text that he wrote. And when I approached him in 2015, and uh, I, I said I want to use you and uh, for this film, I knew him already. He said, and I want you to read it. We cannot use all that you say here, and uh, but, but and and that was the threat. That I tried to follow, but again, the problem was how to put the interviews that I had already done with him or without him, and so that's a, that's a form that it acquired. Uh, but I, I, the tone of this narration is what gave me like the tempo for the pictures, not so much Lucinda's words, but uh, uh, his 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 narration. I wanted to think it was myself, you know. Yeah, it was just so exquisitely done and grounded everything so, not mm -hmm. only grounded, so I connected everything so beautifully. Um, with, I guess, the, the, the last moments that we have together, I'm curious to know what your aunt thought when she watched the documentary. Well, when she was, uh, when she saw the documentary, that's the only, uh, live screening uh, we have had. It was at, at the wow. film school where I teach. Uh, and it was made for the crew and for the Lucinda and her, for her friends. So it was a cinema, yeah, at the film school. But, and uh, well, she was very moved. She was very moved and very uh, happy because she also a couple of her colleagues, also elderly people showed up, painters as well, you know. So for him, it was like, for her, it was like a homage, you know, to see a big celebration for her. Right now, her memory is not good. She, she, she's, right now, she's a lot older than you. She's almost 96. Well, she was born in 1925. And maybe my mathematics are not right, but she was not. She's 96, yeah. 96, yeah. And, uh. And, and her memory is failing, 
but uh, she knows that the, the, her film was shot, was uh, shown at the San Diego Festival on the 14th and today. And I phoned her today to to tell her that we were going to have this Q and A, uh, and she may forget tomorrow. For, for like, very likely tomorrow, will not remember anything. But at least today, she she said, "Oh, thank you. I'm very oh, well. I'm very happy to know this." And she she was uh, moved, you know, by this. But as as I say here, her memory is very frail, and so tomorrow, I'll have to repeat. Uh, to tell her again about uh, the, the screenings and about this uh, chat that we're having, you and I, at this moment. I guess, uh, but after she watched the documentary, what did she say to you? She didn't speak much. She was very moved, uh, and, uh, okay. and 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 basically, she she was listening to the comments and of the other guests. Uh, yeah, there's a Q and A, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was a screening, she, and she she could practically didn't speak. She wanted to listen to what other people wanted to say, and uh, but she was very moved, very very moved. Juan Francisco, it, what are you working on next? I have a couple of ideas. Uh, I have several ideas. One of my sensors still, I'm still I might have some afraid of just going out while the virus is still there. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to to see what I can use because I have a lot of uh, things that I have filmed in the past. I also have a big collection of home movies, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that I've that I bought on eBay and other sources, you know, home movies, uh, tourists in Mexico. Whatever. I'm trying to figure what can I do with that material. And also with the, uh, all, all the interviews they have made to other people, you know, if, can, if there is a film or not, uh, or there, if it, there could be a film with some of those interviews. And uh, for instance, or the film about the family, I also interviewed other people that fought in the, or there were children at the time of the Spanish Civil War. They all died now. But I, I didn't use much of their interviews for that film, so I'm, I, in a couple of cases, I may do. A, I may be able to make a, one or two short films, just short portraits about those people, and it's also a matter of justice. You know, they gave me again the time and whatever, and and I used too little of their interviews, and uh, I want to use more of more of them because it, the things that do not fit into the film can be lost for good. So, in a way, to take the most. Uh, most of them, you know, and that's basically what I, another one, a film about a, an, an artist who just died from COVID. He's in the film, Manuel Felgueres, he's, he speaks in the film. Uh, he was one of the people that saw the film at that, that moment, but he died from COVID a few months ago. And and I also made, I mean, interviewed him about three hours. It's a very, an extensive interview. And... Uh, so one of, that's another project, and uh, but it's, which I'm going to do next. That depends on what, um, where, I, what money I can get and where from. Sometimes yeah. you think that ah, this this film is or this is practically ready, and this is, and no, maybe that's the only film you you cannot make, and maybe there's another film you or another idea that you you were not so keen about. But suddenly you find somebody that believes in it and that, you know, is willing to, to risk risk some money or whatever. We, we don't have much except for Imcine, you know, the, uh, and it's once a year that uh, there's a contest, you know, to, to get funding. And I missed it this year, so uh, I, I missed it. And so I have to see what I can do in, before January 2022. But in the meantime, I'm very happy to, really, it's an honor to, uh, I don't want to flatter you, but uh, uh, I like these uh, interviews that you do and uh, that this festival does. I know about programming because I used to be a programmer of a festival that I did for five years. 
festival of documentaries about the arts. And I did it for, for, in Mexico City five years. And before that, I also did was well, the programmer for, for programmer for documentaries uh, encounters at the film school. And I know how it's important to well the, to conceive the program, but also the, to this, this Q and A things. And without without this, it's just like this, without these uh, conversations, uh, it's, it's no longer a festival. I think if, if there's no feedback and if there's no you know, rapport with other filmmakers, or then it's uh, it's pointless to do a f festival. So I appreciate this this invitations that that you made me to to be in this talk. You no, know? really, the honor is all ours. Like I mentioned, meeting you a couple of years ago was a highlight of my time with this festival. And when I found out that you were submitting your new your new documentary, I was over the moon excited to watch it. Thank you so much for sharing this beautiful documentary about your aunt with us. Um, it celebrates her life and cements her legacy. And I hope that it reaches many, many more people. And I know we were being cautious because of COVID-19, but I hope that the film gets to be screened in physical theaters in the very near future, to be honest, with you there in attendance. Hopefully. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to tell you that if you want to do an extra screening to charge it with your, to get funding, I'll be delighted to, you, you can okay. do uh, just for you, for you for funding, you know, for, for the festival. Thank you, I, I appreciate that offer so much. Um, I hope to screen any of your films in the near future or in the distant future, whenever the new films come about. Um, I hope you have a great night and thank you so much for your time, Juan Francisco. I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you and uh, all, well, my con I want to congratulate all the team you work with, you know, uh, Juan and Ethan and all, all the people I, I don't see, but that I know that they're there someday, somehow uh, for making this festival great. Yeah, it's a labor of love. <laughs> yes. It's a labor of love for sure. Thank you so much, and I hope to talk to you soon. Good night. Thank you, Moises. Good night. Thank you.